All right, everyone, this is Nick. I'm back with another episode of the ReVenture YouTube cast. Today, we're going to take another deep data dive, and we're going to look into Columbus, Ohio. Now, Columbus, Ohio is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated real estate markets in the country. It doesn't tend to get a lot of attention. It kind of gets lost in the shuffle of all the other Midwest cities. But when you look at the fundamentals, Columbus is one of the most impressive real estate markets in the country. Uh, and in my opinion, it's the crown jewel of the Midwest. It's where all the growth is occurring in the Midwest. If anyone is looking to buy uh, a home in Columbus or invest in real estate, or uh, if anyone's just looking to move to the city, this will be a great video for you to watch because we're gonna explore uh, two fundamental questions. The first is, is investing in Columbus real estate uh, safe and a good idea right now? Based on the fund fundamentals of the market, do we think Columbus real estate uh, is safe and a strong investment? Uh, the second question we're gonna attempt to answer is, what areas within Columbus are the best to invest? So with that, why don't we get right into it? So in the introduction, I called Columbus the crown jewel of the Midwest. And what do I mean by that? Well, the Midwest, uh, by and large, you know, Western Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan is a place where real estate investment has been pretty poor over the last couple of decades. And that's because the economy in the Midwest has really declined. Um, you know, it was heavy manufacturing based and a lot of jobs were lost to outsourcing and uh, the uh, populations are also really old. For a variety of these reasons, the Midwest hasn't been a good place to invest in real estate. But Columbus is the exception to that. And this graph really tells the story. So what we're looking at here is the growth in population in the five largest cities in the Midwest United States. So here at the top, we have Columbus, then we have Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Detroit. And we're tracking the population growth experienced from 2005 to 2019. And you know, Columbus just jumps off the page here. Um, we can see that Columbus has increased its population in the metro area by 27% in the last 15 years, going from 1.6 million to 2.1 million. So that's 500,000 people added to the Columbus metro area. No other city in the Midwest is even remotely close. Cincinnati is second place at plus 9% literally one third of the amount of growth. And then you go all the way down to the bottom here, Pittsburgh, population is flat over the last 15 years. Pittsburgh has the same amount of people today as it did 15 years ago. And then in Cleveland and Detroit, it's actually negative. So Cleveland and Detroit have actually lost population in their metro areas over the last 15 years. This is super important to understand because it explains why Columbus bucks the trend of the Midwest stagnation. Columbus is a vibrant and diverse economy. It's adding a lot of people and a lot of income and a lot of jobs to uh, its metro area every single year. And of course, that's great for real estate values. When you add people, when you add jobs, when you add income, real estate values tend to go up. And that's why Columbus is the best performer and the crown jewel of the Midwest. And we can see the impact of that growth on real estate values on this graph. So the red line is looking at the average home value in Columbus over the last 20 years. And then the gray line is looking at the average home value in the U.S. So you can see that Columbus, well, you can see a couple of things here. The first is that Columbus is um, relatively affordable compared to the rest of the U.S. So the average home value in the U.S. is 263000 as of November of 2020. In Columbus, it's 229,000. So um, Columbus, despite all of its growth in terms of population and jobs in the last 15 years, Columbus is still an affordable place to buy a home. It truly is um, affordable compared to the rest of the US. And that's um, great news for home buyers in Columbus because when you combine the type of population growth Columbus has achieved with affordability, that kind of paves a long runway for growth into the future. Now, kind of on this graph, let's just go back in time for a second so we can see Columbus's history. So we're, we're at 229,000 today. Values in Columbus bottomed out previously in 2013. So the average value in 2013 in Columbus was 135,000. 
So in the last seven years, um, if you'd bought the average home in Columbus, your value would have appreciated from 135 to 229,000. That's almost 100,000 in equity. That's really strong growth. If we go back even further, we can see that Columbus definitely got hit by the great financial crash and the housing bust of the late 2000s. You know, its home value peaked in 06 at 164,000 and then took about six to seven years to finally bottom out at 135. However, encouragingly, you can see that Columbus was not as volatile as the US. You know, you can see back in 2000, the US and Columbus were around the same, then the US like shot way up and then the US kind of shot way down um, after the great financial crash. Columbus kind of went down, but it was a much more moderate decline. So that's a good thing. Columbus does not show um, the boomer bust type traits, maybe of some other housing markets in the US. So, you know, you really combine three things. You have affordability, you have strong population growth, and you have a stable housing market that's showing good growth. That's a great combination. Now, when I've been talking about Columbus so far, I've been referring to the Columbus metro area. So that's not just the city of Columbus, but that's also like surrounding suburbs and towns such as Dublin and Gahanna and Grove City. Um, and so those are all included in the Columbus metro area, which has a population of about 2.2 million people as of 2019. Um, and, you know, if you really want to understand the Columbus real estate market better, you got to um, look with a narrower lens and look uh, more specifically into how the real estate market is operating in the metro area. So Columbus is broken into 10 different counties, which you could see identified on this map. And the one that matters the most, the one you're gonna wanna pay attention most to is Franklin County. So Franklin County, as you can see here, encompasses all of urban Columbus, all of its um, inner, inner interstate loop, um, and you can see a population of 1.3 million is, is massive. So Franklin County accounts for about 70% of the metro area population. It's really where most of the action is in Columbus. However, there's a couple other counties you'll want to pay attention to. Um, the second one is probably Delaware County. And Delaware is experiencing a lot of growth. You can see population has increased by 21% the last 10 years, up to 210,000. Obviously much smaller than Franklin, but in Delaware County is where you're going to see a lot of actually the more expensive homes. A lot of the wealth is kind of moving up to Delaware County. If you guys are enjoying the data presented in this video, please hit subscribe down below and make sure to leave a like or a comment. Uh, I love hearing feedback and I also love hearing new markets that you guys want to see covered. All right, let's get back to the video. And we can see their home values broken out here. So as I said a second ago, Delaware County is kind of the behemoth in terms of home value. The average home value in this county is 361,000. It's where kind of the newest, biggest, nicest homes are going. Um, Union County is actually second at 282,000. And these two counties kind of reflect like the really kind of northern suburbs of Columbus. Now we zoom into Franklin and we see 219,000. Um, and that seems pretty low. I mean, so Columbus is, um, that's below the Columbus average. It's well below the US average. However, that does not mean that everything within Franklin County is cheap. There is a lot of variation that's going on between all of these different areas. We're going to touch upon that in a second. So now we're looking at the percentage increase in home value over the last 10 years. And this is one where Franklin County stands out above the rest, plus 62% appreciation in home value. Franklin is by far number one in terms of home value growth over the last 10 years. Union County comes in at number two at plus 50%. Then you can see Delaware comes in at plus 42%. And you know a lot of these other counties are on that plus 40 plus 40% 40 range. Um, and this is just something I want you to pay attention to. So Franklin, you know, it's, it's cheap, quote unquote, um, but is seen the most home value growth. As I said, this is where most of the population in Columbus is. This is where most of the new development is. This is where most of the action is. On the other hand, Delaware, you know, which is seeing a lot of growth, but its home values are more expensive already. You know, you could see back 10 years ago, the average home value in Delaware was 250. Now it's up to 360, which is kind of getting expensive for Columbus. So expect to see Delaware continue to trail a little bit as its home values become less and less affordable. While looking at things on the county level helps to add some specificity, 
Um, we still need to go deeper because we're really not seeing the full picture here. Within Franklin County, within Delaware County, uh, there's different pockets of growth and there's different areas of stagnation. And you need to know which areas are growing the most and are most likely to grow into the future to be able to make an educated investment decision. So now to get more specific, we're going to bring our analysis to the zip code level. And what this map is looking at is the average home price by zip code, where the greener the zip cell looks, the more expensive it is, the bluer it looks, the less expensive. And what pops off the page here is that really Columbus's home wealth is concentrated in this, I would say, kind of north to northwesterly pocket um, up from where kind of the downtown area is. You can see here 43017 uh, Dublin zip code, average value of 411,000. 43065 uh, in Powell, 396,000. And kind of right here is where we're on the border of Franklin and Delaware County. You go over to 43021. That's another Delaware County zip code, 450,000 average home value. Now let's swing all the way down here to a zip like 43217 or 43207 where the, you know, the average value here is 147,000 or the average value in 43223 is 119,000. So there's just massive differences in um, price and affordability depending whether you go north or whether you go south. So you really got to pay attention to the affordability differences when you're buying a home or you're buying real estate in Columbus. And a lot of it, of course, depends on, you know, your budget and your priorities. You know, if your budget is tighter, and you're more like future growth oriented, those blue shaded affordable areas will be more where you wanna look. If you're more kind of settled, you care more about stability and safety, and you wanna be in a place that's already kind of, let's just say gentrified and nice, all right, by all means, go for those green areas. But Columbus is interesting and then it presents you with a lot of different options, right? Depending on what your budget is and on what you want in your, in your home or your investment property. All right, so now we're back to this zip code map, but instead of it being colored by value, now it's colored by growth rate, value growth rate over the last 10 years, where the greener it looks, the higher the appreciation, the bluer it looks, the lower the appreciation. I'm going to make this easy for you guys. We're going to basically only look at zip codes that have achieved above 70% price appreciation over the last 10 years, just make this visually more interesting so you can really spot the areas of growth. All right, so now we've just isolated zip codes with 70% plus appreciation and it's pretty striking. Everything else pretty much went away except for this really what amounts to the urban core more or less of Columbus um, and then several zip codes kind of to the south and east of the urban core and then a couple to the north. So why don't we go through these one by one? All right, so now we're zoomed in, we're in the satellite imagery. And, um, you know, the zip that really jumps off the page here is 43205. This is a zip that's kind of, you know, we have downtown over here. It's to the east of downtown. It's a neighborhood that some people call Old Town East. Um, 43205, this zip code, the average value 10 years ago was 65 grand. And, you know, you can see there's a lot of, a lot of homes in this zip code, right? Like we're really dense. There's a lot of homes that you know, most, of, most of them were around 10 years ago. So the, the appreciation in the zip code is not from all these new homes being built. It's from the existing homes um, increasing in value. And plus 250% value growth. Values almost quadrupled in the last 10 years. If you had bought a home 10 years ago, um, you would have almost 4 x your money um, which is unbelievable return. In fact, it's so unbelievable that um, it's actually in the top 10 of all zip codes in America for 3205 in terms of its value growth. So um, you don't see appreciation like this typically. Um, so that, that's really, really amazing, really special. If you want to get into a high growth area, 43205 might, might be a good option. Um, and just below that is 43206. And this is a bit of a bigger zip code. Again, you can see extremely dense, like lots and lots of homes. Average price here was 100,000 10 years ago. It's 225,000 today. That's plus 120%, more than doubling. And um, this kind of is like two different zip codes, 
or I should say two different neighborhoods in the zip code. Over here is a neighborhood called German Village. Um, and then kind of to the east, we kind of get into a, like more of a different, less gentrified zip code. So if you were to kind of cut a line through here, this one would probably be a higher value than this one. But in general, the whole area is increasing in price. And that trend just continues if we move south. 43207, this is another big zip code, plus 83% uh, growth over the last 10 years. And you can see here the average home value is still only 147,000 in 43207. So, um, you know, while, while our price has gotten a little higher in 43206 and 43205, 43207 is still really affordable. So, um, you know, if you're looking for an area that's high growth, but still cheaper, 43207 would be a good option. 43223 might be an even better option, um, which kind of covers some of the area to the west of down, southwest of downtown Columbus. We experienced plus 77% growth here the last 10 years, and we're still only at an average value of 120,000. Um, and again, we're pretty dense. Now, if you do go into the zip code, you're, you're going to need to expect that you are not as nearly like developed and gentrified as say some of these other zip codes that we just talked about. So, um, you know, if you're, you're, you're more in it for the long haul and you want a place with good, lo really long-term growth potential, 43223 would be a good option. Now, if we kind of head back north of downtown Columbus. So again, this is downtown Columbus over here. We head north to 43201. This is a zip code that covers basically the what's called the short north. And this is like one of the more happening um, nightlife type spots in Columbus, uh, plus 89% growth going from 150,000 to 294,000. So you can see now the price points are getting higher. We're up to 294,000, but the growth is still really strong. And that's because the short north 43201, that is like where all the action is in Columbus in terms of nightlife, in terms of new restaurants and bars. So a lot of people want to live there. Just to the West is 43212. This is a neighborhood called Grandview. Now, now the price is starting to get really high. 76% growth with price up to 391,000. So 391,000, your, your price entry point on average is um, much higher. And just that's probably not getting you like a home home in Grandview. That's probably getting you like on a lower end of a home or maybe a condo. Um, but great schools in this zip code and um, also a lot of good restaurants, a lot of good nightlife, uh, good combination of different different things. If we kind of go more to the Northeast now, we we see a bit of a change. So again, we have high growth in 43211, but we got lots of affordability in 43211. We're talking average value of 81,000 in November 2020. And again, there's a lot of homes in the zip code. Um, and if you do drive the zip code, it's going to feel way different than the zip codes over here, just to tell you, but average value of 80,000, if you're looking for like an investment property, look how close you are to the short North and downtown Columbus in this zip code where you can get an average value of 81,000. So yeah, you know, I think we, we learned two things in this video. The first is that Columbus appears to be a very safe investment market. Its population growth over the last 15 years is way higher than any other area in the Midwest. Um, you know, for that reason, I, I keep calling it the crown jewel of the Midwest. And because of that higher population growth, it's achieved really strong home value appreciation over the last 10 years. Um, but despite that appreciation, it's still affordable. And that's the key thing you want to focus on, affordability. As long as you're affordable and you have strong um, fundamentals in the economy, it's going to be hard to go wrong. It's going to be hard to lose a lot of money investing in real estate. So yes, we think Columbus is safe. Now, in terms of where to invest in Columbus, uh, if you're looking to buy a home, um, if you, your budget isn't as big a concern, you probably want to go up to maybe Delaware, um, get, get a bigger house, a newer house, or maybe you want to go to a neighborhood like Grandview, um, which we just looked at where the, where the values are higher and the neighborhoods are more established. If you're looking for growth, you definitely want to go south of downtown Columbus. That's where we're seeing growth rates of like 100 to 200 percent in value over the last 10 years. And we're still seeing kind of the further south you go, a lot of affordability. I started Reventure Consulting a year ago to help real estate owners and investors make better decisions when buying a home or an investment property. These are the biggest financial decisions that you will ever make. So you might as well make them with strong data and a strong investment thesis and narrative. 
Uh, if you want help with that, please reach out to me here either on YouTube or go to www.reventureconsulting.com and submit a contact form. Until next time, this is Nick from Reventure Consulting signing off. Thank you.